What is up, fam? We are back for episode number 13 with NFC, a non-fungible cast. Uh, we have, you know, obviously WT with us, as always, WT and I. And today we have the Schiller. Uh, you guys know him in the Guild of Gardens community. And I'm sure if you're in the NFTs, you know him as well. He's very out there and, and uh, you know, understands the space. Um, WT, what is new? That, that, that caterpillar keeps getting bigger. I tell you, it's going to turn into a butterfly soon. What's new and exciting, my brother? What you saying? Ah, oh, not much, man. Busy, busy week between all the projects that you and I are involved in. And first off, you got a very, very interesting shirt on. And now I'm jealous because you've got something that I don't have. I don't have that color or that type. And uh, yeah, I do. cranking away, talking about projects, talking about NFTs. You know the drill. Yeah, I want to say, before I introduce uh, our, our man, the Schiller, I want to say thank you so much for uh, O Canada A, the community. You guys hooked these up, uh, so we all got one of these. All the, the officers have got one of these, so that's pretty cool. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, I finally got myself the Guild of Gardens shirt, so thank you so much for that, my brother. Uh, and uh, Tomahawk, you're a beauty. All right, the Schiller, let's hear it, man. Let's hear about yourselves. Wow, what's new and exciting? What's, uh, tell us about yourself. Let us get to know you a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Vaughn Schiller. At least that's my stage name that I go by. I do a Twitch stream, have some YouTube content, do a podcast called Shot to the Moon as well. Uh, I've been doing it pretty much for like the past year uh, for content creation overall. Uh, I started with NBA Top Shot and then kind of branched off. And, you know, first thing that I minted that wasn't or sorry, I, <laughs> we have this argument of like, oh, is like Top Shot really NFTs and all this kind of jazz. But the uh, when I when I started kind of branching off from Top Shot and really learning the space, first thing I got into was like Zed Run and Board Ape Yacht Club which ended up being obviously massive uh, for what it was and really just been kind of riding the wave and realizing that, you know, digital identity is something that's super important. And so for Gilded Guardians, when they dropped those uh, avatars a while back, I went straight to the market and I picked up like one of the uh, second rarest demon traits uh, for one of them and a whole bunch of the goblin ones because I thought, hey, this is kind of cool, even though we don't know if they're going to do anything. But now we're, we're kind of getting to the point where, you know, the top projects right now are more culturally relevant than technologically relevant mm -hmm. and i think that that shift is going to change quite rapidly here um and i mean i think the uh the alpha and everything and we'll get get into that in a little bit for gilded guardians was a really interesting bit because it was probably one of the few projects that actually had something that was a working product that wasn't completely full of bugs that broke the game essentially right we're seeing a lot of things within the space were like cool pets they're having significant amount of issues there's you know projects trying to do things left right and center coming out saying hey we're just building our own chain because there's nothing out there at the same time that there's you know all this massive amount of funding and then you got immutable x and all that kind of jazz but stoked to be here really appreciate you guys inviting me <laughs> yeah no i'm glad you say that because that, that's that, you're right i think there is going to be a shift there has to be a shift uh at, at some point right now i uh, like from what i see project wise and what i see like just What's out there, Gilded Guardian seems to have a really good foundation. I feel like they have a solid, 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 solid foundation. The game is there. We played the alpha. I want to actually talk to you about the alpha. I want to bring it up, your thoughts on it. Did you play it at all? You, you got to play it a little bit, or did you get to play it at all? No? Yes, no? So, uh, you know, I, I, I really kind of am annoyed with myself with it because I logged in. I played it, I want to say, for like about an hour or two. Mm. And in my mind, instead of saying, hey, you know, this is something that you could write about. This is something that you can really learn about. I went to, oh, this is going to reset. Why would I want to make any kind of progress right now? Yep. And so I found it fun, but I, I'm mad at myself looking back being like, shit, like take advantage mm -hmm. of that just to see what it's like. But, you know, progress is progress. I, uh, I always have that exact same mindset as you did there where it's like, you know, I, I never care for alphas and stuff because it's just it's temporary. I don't want to put the work in, burn myself out on that product. So when the real game comes out, it's like, yeah, I'm already kind of, you know, burnt out um, or like have to redo it or whatever it is. So I agree with you on that. But of course, in this case with Gilded Guardians, I I did play it a lot uh i didn't play it the last two days of it but i did play it a lot up up until then so um but yeah do you have any thoughts on it like what did, what were the things you liked about it what were the things i mean obviously you played it for an hour so you didn't get like the full 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 experience but the the, the fact that the, the things that you did play the things that you did try what did you think was good what did you think that worked what did you think was was kind of needed a little bit of fixing is there anything what's your kind of thoughts on it yeah, like I thought that it ran incredibly smooth, to be honest. Like I know that's probably like a, a bit of a cop-out answer, but like because we've had so many broken things, being able to like do all the abilities, being able to have everything that was running pretty much like without a problem whatsoever, it was really refreshing from that standpoint. The figuring out between the different characters, it's, I had Nick, we did a YouTube series with Nick like a while ago, and I need to kind of kick that back off because we kind of uh, haven't talked as much as we did back then, but he was talking about you know like the different classes and like the meta and all this kind of stuff and 
wow. When you get into the game, you're like, holy shit, that's totally needed, right? Because you have like the up close when you're interacting with the different characters and then the far away. And sometimes you're like, whoa, 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 I can't be like near that at all. And you need that other one where like in my head, when we originally had that discussion, I was kind of thinking, okay, like maybe the meta is going to be like only people that are like fighting up front, only people right. that are ranged. But it feels like it's going to be a mixture of all of that. Um, I think... The interface looked really cool. I thought the team killed it in terms of the leaderboard aspect, trying to show like, hey, here's how much people have grinded. And mm -hmm. I thought that that was something that every project is going to need a copy because same with like the Board 8 mobile game, the people that were in those like top 10, again, you were able to see their name all the time. People want that. And that's, you know, you want to have that kind of like desire for that competition within it. And the fact that it's free and you have that, that's that's probably the best thing that I like about this is when I played it, I'm like, if I'm somebody that doesn't own one of these assets, I can play it. No right. other game that I've really seen out there has that axe. You have to buy one of those things. I think they're moving to like a free option, whatever. Yeah. But the aspect that they're having that, that it's easy to understand too. Like it wasn't hard, like in depth, like I couldn't explain it to you, but just kind of doing it casually. I'm like, oh, this is easy. And I think that the them talking about how many people they're going to onboard, this this might be the new top shot for onboarding and NFTs within gaming. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Top Shot. That was the first thing I got into, too. Uh, it's Yeah, is it NFTs? Is it not? Who knows? But yeah, I got into the same thing as you. I Like I said, though, yeah, with the, with the free character so anybody can play. And we've been mentioning this. Uh, we've mentioned this so many times on the podcast. This is a free-to-play game. This is this is a free-to-play mobile play-and-earn game. It's it, You're not going to, obviously, you know, retire from it. I mean, you're probably not going to be able to retire from it regardless. But it's like with these free-to-play play, uh, players, they're going to be able to play. And that's what it is, is onboarding, getting people in the game. That's what you want people getting in the door and then maybe there probably will be bottlenecks you know like in any mobile game in any game there's a bottleneck where you get to it's like well am i going to open up the wallet or not i could see that you know but they said you're going to be able to play um through the game for free so it's just how fast do you want to play do you want to you know blow through it like like everyone's planning on doing with their legendary heroes going right through without any problems maybe they will have problems who knows but as a free-to-play player you are going to have a few uh, moments of bottlenecks uh wt anything you want to add on that with the uh with with the uh the alpha anything he was said that was said uh yeah he had a lot of the the main points and we've talked about it quite a bit it's been in the community quite a bit my my question that i want to get your thoughts on you've been in this space uh, longer than i have and you've seen a lot more of startups and failures and all these different projects you've been in a ton so the only real deal polished game that I've seen so far, and I know they had problems when they first started, was the uh, mythical games company Play Blancos. Um, that one is by far the closest to the AAA, in my my personal opinion. Yeah. Have you seen any project that can compare to what Guild of Guardians did on their first attempt out of the gate? Holy sugar. That's a loaded <laughs> question. I'm trying to think, and I, like... I want to say that there is, but there are, they haven't grasped my attention or like big enough of an attention, right? Like we have we have things like Ember Sword, which is another one that I've heard about, and I remember when it launched or like dropped, it was all the rage. I haven't really heard about it since, and to be honest, like for Guild of Guardians, most of the people within, you know, kind of what I follow, what I talk about, most people have Guild of Guardian assets but they're not paying attention to it because they know that it's farther away. Right, and so, right. I mean, th this isn't answering your question because I, no, like, I, I don't think I've seen that necessarily, but I think the one strong suit that this has is that people recognize, hey, this is going to be something, right? And so sure, we've seen this kind of like market dips of people that, you know, it's the NFT space, it happens. But I think there's a lot of people from those early OG days that have that, that, you know, when the full game comes out, when they realize all that stuff, when they're not distracted by everything else, I think we're in for a really special treat, to be honest, with the team working the way that they are. But in comparison to other projects out there, the vast majority are DeFi staking games. It's not something like Blank House. It's not something like Guild of Guardians within the alpha, where you're able to play it, have the good time. Sandbox, it's still an alpha. 
not many people talk about it for Decentraland. Again, that's supposed to be kind of, you know, the whole metaverse and everything. It's really, really cool, but I, I don't really hear many people logging in except for if it's an event maybe happening like once a month that's kind of bigger uh, within the space. And so the thing that I'm kind of excited for to see is what does Guild of Guardians do within the entire metaverse, we'll call it, of whatever it is, right? Whether it's Yuga, right. whether it's, you know, Sandbox of Centraland, are they going to have any kind of presence in this other stuff? Because they're just the game, right? But I have to imagine that they're going to kind of want to have some kind of presence elsewhere as well. I might yeah. have asked you, I might I might have asked it wrong. I, I didn't mean to ask you a loaded question. Apologize about that. It's just- No, 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 you're good, you're from, good. From the, from the sample size that I've had so far, all the all the ones that have been released, there's either been massive problems right off the bat or massive delays. Yes, and delays this was their first run. And I was I was I was expecting all kinds of headaches. I was. I went and it's like, it's a pre-alpha, there's gonna be problems. And there was like practically none. And it was that blew me away. I was like, okay, they got a good grasp on the game itself. Not the blockchain integration yet, but the game itself. And that's what I was kind of looking like if you had seen anything like that. So sorry about the loaded question. There. No, 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 you're good. Well, that's that's just the thing is there's not many things out there that are getting developed that's not like these DeFi kind of like staking games. Like there's not, right? You can see all these trailers and we've had massive projects come out, a whole bunch of them, you know, raising a lot of money. And then it's kind of announced, oh, hey, like, okay, we're going to like start development or here's, you know, little snippets of what we've had, but it's not, it's not the full DeFi. And I think that we're going to see a huge shift back to like the culturally relevant to technology relevant. I think it's going to be oh. that have been building for the past year versus the ones that are kind of like the hype that I still think are going to be able to do something, but it's going to take that same amount of time, but they're not going to be able to do it quicker than these ones that were out before. Yeah, I like how you brought up Ember Sword um, and stuff like that. There's so many games like when I was getting into this, like more of the the NFT or the the, the play to earn games. Ember Ember Sword was everywhere. It was like Ember Sword and Mist and I don't know. Uh, well, Luvium's another one too. But you're right. You hear them and then they kind of die out. Like Ember Sword, I don't. I haven't heard anything about them in, in forever. Well, Super um, Yeti made a game too, or they were saying they were going to do that in like Eververse, which actually like has a game for that. But like you know, there was a point where to sell out a project, it was I'm making a game. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I, I like how you said that answer. Another thing too I find with a lot of things these days is the biggest problem is liquidity pool. I feel I feel like that's the biggest problem in every game. These games come out, um, you know, they promise the world. There's a lot of staking or whatever you call it. There's these liquidity pools, <clears throat> but then they get drained. Once that liquidity pool is drained, if they don't have a proper burning mechanism or whatever, th there's no recovery. There's no coming back from that. And I feel like that's the biggest problem for a lot of these games. There's a lot of quick money. You get in. <clears throat> all these investors, they know the whales come in. They buy up every Thing, they stake it they drain that pool they leave and everyone else gets stuck with the thing i feel like with with gog with the guild of guardians i think they have to me personally um i i feel like they have the most stable the, the the strongest team their foundation to me is the is the best i've ever seen and now i could sound maybe biased a little bit but i'm, I'm really not i i just from what i've seen i've been around in a lot of different games a lot of different um communities and from what i see what guild of guardians doing they're not rushing into it they're not trying to throw out a product just to make money they're there um now the one thing i will say with the with the assets is you know right now the market's down the market's very down right now uh but we've mentioned this a few times. It's like, because they're right now, we're in that kind of like the, the, the lull area. There's no hype. There's nothing going on. Um, of course the game's not come, you know, the game's not coming out for another year or so. Of course, you know, it's hard to, to maintain that hype. It's hard to maintain that, that energy towards the game when you know, it's a year away and there's nothing really going on. So what are some of the things that, you know, the Guild of Guardians team are going to have to do? Like, yes, we did have the pre-alpha just now, but what are some things they're going to have to do to kind of keep that hype going, which I know is unrealistic to get it, to have it going for a year straight. It's unrealistic. You know, you got to be realistic about things, but they have to keep the engagement there. They have to keep people maybe... Like one thing I always said was, I mean, we talk about staking again. There's got to be a reason for people to hold their assets because if they're holding onto these assets and, you know, because people want, like, people want to be able to, to have their money there and ready in case something comes up. If you're locking in, you know, thousands of dollars from certain people, some people say, I, I can't afford to hold those there. I just can't. So what are some things that, you know, that the team can do or, or whatever to kind of, you know, soften that blow or to keep the interest into the game, into the community? So for the interest within the community, I think that new uh, new players is something that I've realized is probably top three things that any project needs to continually have. And when I mean new players, I mean new 
NFT holders. This could go for anyone within the space because check out any project. You go into their Discord and most people are being like, oh, marketing, marketing, marketing. And what they mean by marketing is we want to see new people enter the game. Sure, you know, throw out the trailers, all that kind of stuff to keep people's interest peaked, but they're going to want to see new people continually to come in. And again, apologies for bringing up Top Shot a lot with this, but that was uh -huh. one of the things early stages, right? Was people that were like, hey, you know, the value of the moments are going down and because NFTs are just automatically associated with, you know, dollar valuations, they're like, oh, bring in the new people that'll, you know, it'll kind of save things. And that's, you know, that could have been the case, but there wasn't really as much of an onboarding or successful onboarding during that time. And with Top Shot and the way that I viewed it was like, okay, for the series ones that are the first ones, they're going to be super rare in time. Exact same thing that I think with Guild of Guardians Founders Editions. Sure, they might not have some crazy abilities or whatever, but the fact that they were like the first ones within this, it's a matter of those kind of appreciating over time where it's valued. And we're not supposed to have it where these things are worth a ton of money because everybody's evaluating that as, oh, this is a game that's successful. You know, it's got 20 million players mm -hmm. and they, this is going to be an absolute gold mine. It's like, like, no, same with Top Shot. I look at that as kind of the physical collectible world, uh, except, you know, digital. And so it's like, these kind of things are going to take time. NFTs make everything on steroids, and we're stuck with the valuation of things instead of truly enjoying it. And wow. I think as we're going through here, these kind of like quiet periods where the market kind of resets and you have the people that don't even want to play the game for Guild of Guardians, they were just back. They were like, hey, we can buy into this. I don't know what it is. Let's send it. Right. Those people are able to get out. The new people that come in are like, hey, you know what? Let's take a stab at this game. And then they get rewarded for it for actually participating within the ecosystem. I agree because that, that was that was one of the things was the buy-in point at one point for Guild of Guardians was, was pretty high. You know, it was pretty high. So by having this kind of, you know, by the, having the dip or whatever you want to call it, it gives the new players a chance to get in. And it's like, okay, well, now I don't have to spend, you know, $200 to get in this game, you know. For twenty bucks, I could buy a couple of here or a hero, and you know, and 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 try this out or whatever, you know. So I like that. I like that too. Uh, WT, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I agreed a lot with what he said, and uh, I've had some realizations myself lately. I, I watched the prices pretty close. I really started watching them back on November eighteenth of twenty twenty one, and I watch them on a daily basis, and I was actually tracking them quite a bit. Um. For a while there, I thought we had roughly five to ten thousand hardcore gamers slash investors and uh you know i've come out and said you know i was completely wrong about something uh when, when they came out with the the, the 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 delay uh notice it really hurt the overall market and it's it's understandable but i did not realize how many actual investors there are majority they're here to invest and make money the people that are like myself a gamer slash investor hybrid we're very, we're very few. And what you said is they need new people to come in the space. They need gamers in the space is what they need. And they've, they have come out and repeatedly said that that is their main focus is getting gamers. They've come out and said 50 million, which is a lot, <laughs> but <It's> a lot. <laughs> even if, even if they got 1 million, it would be a lot for this space and their continued, their continued stances. While we appreciate the short, short-term investors, that's not what we're here for. And I think the short-term investors got that message and that's why they started backing out. So for me, I was wrong. I was definitely wrong. We are in the minority us gamers slash investors, and we need more of us in this space, in my opinion. What I, the way I see it is any, especially right now, like where we are right now with NFTs and crypto, everyone always sees it as it's a money, it's a way to make money. And anytime there's a new project that comes out, you're going to get those investors. And there's a lot of them. People right now, we're in it to make money. So you're going to see a lot of that. And, and the other side I see is people always hype up a project because it will benefit them. Okay. So say the Guild of Guardians investors are in, you think they're there for the game. They're there for themselves because they're hyping it up, bringing the attention to it, which brings more people in, which, uh, you know, 
b- makes their bags a little bigger. And you got it. And, and, and you know, the longer you're in the, the space and stuff, you realize there's a lot of people that do that. They just, they're in, they're hyping. Yeah, we're here for the team. One day they disappear. You never see them again. Well, they, you know, <laughs> they hyped it up. The prices went up. They sold their assets. And you can't blame it. People are here for money. Not, you know, not everybody's here for the game. And, and that's just the way that the, the nature of the beast is. And that's just, that's just where we are right now. I think NFT gaming is, is, is new and, uh, and investors see that. And, and you see all these things that people making all this money and stuff. But again, I'm in it long term. So I, for me, it doesn't matter. I'm here to play the game. I like the game. I want, I love the well, community. I got, know? I got, a, I got an interesting take and I'm curious both your guys thoughts on yeah, it because this is, this is honestly, uh, something that I've kind of done at points. And so for Guild of Guardians, I'm pretty bullish on, right? Right. And if they come out and they make that announcement of, Hey, there's going to be a delay. I'm sitting there like, okay, so now might be the time to sell some of these assets to try to go ride the wave of something else of something that, you know, potentially has been worked on a little bit longer 100%. or has some like incra- crazy hype. And then it's like, okay, if you have success elsewhere, and again, you're right. NFTs for the most part right now are all about those financial things. And then I can go back and be like, all right, if I can take what I have here that I believe is probably going to stay a little bit stagnant as they're developing, as they're building, and I can, you know, stack up my ETH bag somewhere else and then be able to come back in right. at, you know, double, triple to potentially quadruple plus the position. That's what we look at. So of course. I think that there is definitely that. And at the same time, if people do that, they might look back at Guild of Guardians and say, oh, you know what? That's just not the what I originally thought for certain things or have a bit less conviction. But I think that there is, you know, when I talk about a lot of people still having those OG assets that just don't really like even look at them right now, I think that potentially some of them could end up coming like flying back into the ecosystem. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what people do. That's as, as I say, they, they need that money. They're like, I can't hold on to these assets. They're going to sell them. <clears throat> Excuse me go somewhere else, invest, and they may come back. They may or may not come back, uh, for sure. So I actually want to speak about a few things. Speaking of, you know, Guild of Guardians and stuff, uh, IMX, Big Daddy IMX, man. These guys are no joke. You know, I am very, I have so much, I mean, I'm very bullish on IMX. I believe they're the the king of kings. Um, <clears throat> they've been hiring like crazy. In 2017, they only had three employees, okay? Um, now, as of today, they have 250. So they are expanding. They are not messing around. These guys are not playing um, explain what that means for GOG. Explain what I am. Explain what I, that means for IMX and the entire NF, NFT industry because they're not playing around. Uh, WT, do you want to take this one first? Because they're not messing around, man. They went from three employees four years ago to 250. They got like two billion dollars of investments or something like that that just came in. I don't know. There's just to me, these guys are they're not messing around, man. WT, let's take that. Let's see what your thoughts on that are. <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I got to be careful. I think I might be getting some notices to cease and desist orders with stalking the Ferguson brothers and the <laughs> MX crew because that's what I do. And uh, mm. yeah, they when they got that Series C funding, I noticed a huge uptick in hiring. And it's not just the amount that they're hiring; it's the people that they're going after. I've seen people from other projects uh, just recently. Uh, Justin Hilong from Riot Games was a big one that they snagged. And coincidentally, a few days after that hire, they announced that, uh, yeah, they got some money from them in that investment. I thought that was very interesting. And then uh, they brought over Caitlin, which we talked with. Uh, she's kind of like a, almost like a project manager for Guild of Guardians, so to speak. Um, then recently they brought over, uh, what's his name here? Sorry, apologize. Oh, William, William Thompson. I'm just learning about him. Tons of experience. He's into, they call it agile project managing. And I was looking it up. Uh, in my line of work that I do outside of this, it's basically like a overall manager and there's procedures in place and the way they do things and almost like a quasi HR department. And that's what he's doing. And he has a huge line of history of doing it on all kinds of projects for many, many years. And then they just also brought over, uh, boy, he was on a Twitter spaces. I'm, uh, Kruig. He's from mythical games, Mr. Kruig. And he was a big part of their community being brought up over 500% in just a year of, of their discord involvement. And we know about play Blankos, what a great game that is. And the point is, not only are they bring in a lot of people, but they're bringing in quality people to bolster up their staff. 
Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, like I said, from three to 250, they're not playing around. They're not playing around at all. We've seen what they've done with Gods Unchained. Uh, what are your thoughts on that uh, with that kind of hiring, with the kind of quality, like he said? Like, they're bringing in real quality people. They're not just hiring anybody up the street. Like, these are people that they're vetted. They are good at what they do. They've they got the esports, uh, esports, all that stuff. Uh, any thoughts on that, uh, Schiller? I think the smartest people in the world are going to all be working in Web3 in 2022. Million I think percent. that the amount of funding that's out there is ridiculous. We look at just IMX, say, oh, they have this. Look at every other top tier project that is pulling in royalties between like $75,000 to over $200,000 a day. Yeah, is insane. insane and these you know they're gonna have to scale we have the businesses i mean for like board apes they went and you know they're with Adamoka brands and started as four they had to get bigger and you know that might be something where they didn't feel comfortable with kind of expanding the team themselves so they went to another entity and brought all them together where imx they're comfortable to do that within their own bubble which is you know very bullish for them to be able to say hey we're gonna take that kind of stance bring in these amount of people i think the overarching thing that is the driver of kind of this conversation is ETH going to stay the king blockchain. Mm -hmm. IMX is going to do what they can to make sure that happens, as is a lot of other people. In terms of layer twos, we know that there's a lot of issues with a lot of other ones. Polygon's got insane funding. We've seen Arbitrum really take it up. There's Phantom. There's all these ones that are coming out, 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 out. But what has the NFT products and games right now that's successful? Right. IMX. If they can just continue to build that, they're going to be doing absolute wonders for the entire Ethereum ecosystem. Yeah, I think I am. Like I said earlier, man, I think IMX is is going to be king of kings in this in this industry. They, they just, how can you not? How can you? How can you bet against them? It just I, I don't know. I don't know how you could bet, bet against them for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the roadmap. Like the future of GOG. What's the future of GOG like? Uh, again, we're saying how they want to go and be um, uh, very free to play. And 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 I picked up on this from the first. AMA, the first time they said it, uh, it was very obvious they want this to be a free-to-play game. So what's the future like? What uh, What is it like for the people that that bought in and got every single hero and stuff like that? What's the future of, of GOG with the release? With the, What do they got to do next? Is the, the marketing. What do they have to do to get to 50 million people like they want? I, okay, so this is this is weird and kind of a little bit of like a selfish thought. But when I, when I was playing it, I didn't really see how it could end up turning into an eSport. And right. it felt like it was like a same. I know, I know they said we're going to do raids with bigger people and all that kind of stuff. But at the current stage, it's like, okay, so you have individual people running through. And so you can still do esports tournaments of like one on one, but there's like a different kind of sense. When you look at team ones, right? Like CSGO, Overwatch League, League of Legends, when you have those teams, those big brands, and it's not just that individual person where you can see with Axie, you know, they kind of have esports, but it's more just individual people. I think there are like game or teams starting up with that, but it's a little bit different. And I think that that kind of adoption where you you have your hyper competitive people people that just you know they might not like playing the game but they might like watching it i think that esports as a whole is very very underrated for the entire gaming space and we've seen the top games out there for the most part they have that unless it's an insane story right which is which is totally possible but for guild of guardians it doesn't feel like an insane story it feels like a dungeon crawler right so right, if right. you can do that as a team kind of you know world of warcraft type vibes with the raids um but i think if they can focus on that aspect that's going to be huge in terms of just becoming some of the biggest things in the world, right? Like content, content, content. I'd like the, the what you guys are doing, what other people are doing. The word needs to get out from people that are passionate about the community because sure, you can hire a whole bunch of others, but you're going to need those people that, you know, work as celebrities within the space. People that, you know, want to talk to or be like, yo, hang out where, you know, Asmund Gold, for example, that guy was shitting on NFTs. But again, whatever he does, a lot of people follow. So right. kind of pulling up that kind of adoption rate between people that are going to be gamers the content creators and then if they can hit that esports market and bring it to kind of a next level that way if they hit all that stuff sheesh, it's gonna be insane <laughs> so for the esports side I, I don't know i don't know if this is their plan I, you're right i don't know how they're gonna do the esport thing to me the only way i see it is if they had like basically you know you have you get your your friends you and three of your friends you make a squad and then you go into almost like an arena type thing so it, it's like a dungeon but a small little dungeon uh one team starts on one side one team starts on the other side and you battle it out 4v4 that's the only way i see it and you kind of have to play it out 
So I think I was reading the white paper like a while back and they were talking about how they were wanting to have like kind of like these raids where I want to say it was like 15 people. And so uh -huh. the way mm -hmm. that I would view that in terms of, you know, OK, there's a team of 15, there's a team of 15, and we'll just say they're going against each other. And then it's a timing race. And yes. so what happens with like World of Warcraft is they say, oh, like these abilities are coming up. Oh, this is happening. Look at the team over there. They're, you know, they're like, right. you know, 30 seconds ahead of the other one. Oh, you know, their healer just went down and that kind of stuff. Like it's not, it's not the mainstream esports, but it's still something that people are passionate about the game are able to have that little bit of extra incentivization to continue to watch it. So I've never, I've never I, you got to explain it because I've never played World of Warcraft. I played other games. Like I played other MMOs and stuff where, where, you know, we we're, we're, you know, we had a really, 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 really good team. Um, but so you're playing, and when you're saying the World of Warcraft, are you playing against each other or are you playing against like a, a mon, like a, a boss? So it's just like, it's against like the, the environment. So there's different like raid bosses and stuff. And so you have like your typical like tanks, you have your healers, your damage yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And then it, it's a matter of execution of who can do it the best fastest. Got it. So it's still PVE. It's not PVP. Correct, correct. Got it. Would would Guild of Guardians ever work as PvP? So I don't, the, well, I mean, that's what I was trying to say. It's ways. like, if they were to do arenas, you could do like you and three of your buddies or however big they want to make the team, 10, 8, 4, whatever the team is, you get your buddies. So you you play one hero. So this is just, I'm just, this is just off the top of my head. I'm just talking, you know, th this is nothing like that. So it's like you control, you want to be the tank, you're the tank. You want to be the healer, you're the healer, whatever your character is. And you get three other buddies. So you got to get your tank, your healer, your ranged, your melee, whatever you want. Okay. You build your team. You could be four casters if you want. And then you go up and you queue against another team that's set up with four and they could be four casters. They could be four tanks. They could be four healers whatever they want they could be one of each and then you get into an arena and then you fight and the winner wins you know and, and there's because i used to play a game called dark age of cam a lot i've mentioned it many 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 times um and uh that's what it is it was eight versus eight but it was open world so you'd run into another team and you're you're jockeying back and forth you're kiting you're pushing you're extending there's all this stuff so i could see it working in gilded guardians i just don't know if that's what their plan is and i don't know, understand how they want to do the esports but yeah so it, it's definitely doable like you could definitely do it a 4v4 in a dungeon kind of thing uh which would be cool there's so many i mean i the, from what i saw um you know obviously this is very diablo-ish you know diablo-like it's a dungeon crawler and everyone's gonna automatically go to diablo but there's many others path of exile and i don't know there's tons of them um but i see i see the the vision and like i said with the gameplay that we had i could see it working pvp i could see it working like these these big raids you're talking about yeah i, I actually forgot they even mentioned those like there's gonna be like 30 person raids or like guild raids or whatever it is and the first ones to queue up or whatever it is goes in i think that stuff's like we didn't even get to test that stuff or play with that stuff which i think is going to be neat um and again i think that's where the the it's going to separate the free to play uh, with the, with the people that have bought heroes and stuff, because if you're free to play, you're probably not going to get into these raids or invited into these bigger guilds, uh, which could be problematic, could be good. Well, yeah. it, I think it comes down to how they're going to play out with the guilds. Like, do you guys have a guild token each, or I personally don't, but I know WT, yeah, yeah. So that's something that I've been looking at. And for the Warriors Guild, which, you know, there, there's a little bit of increase of what, like, the supplies that are gathered and the percent that goes back. And then for the um, uh, the amount of people that you're able to have within that guild, I'm very curious because, again, going back to that white paper, they kind of highlighted about how they're going to have these different tournaments with prize pools. And they're going to have it where it could be open for every single guild or, you know, specific to if you only have an Adventurers Guild, you can only enter that one. So it's an even playing field or only for Warriors and that kind of stuff. And how that'll play in. Like, is that their version of the esports where it's just within the ecosystem? Mm -hmm. Or is it something where, like, a league is created? But I think, like, ultimately for me, I... I wish I, I knew a lot more about like what the guilds are going to do and the kind of like benefits of it because from the alpha, like it was cool to see the gameplay, but again, it's guild of guardians. Give me more about the guilds. That's that's yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. WD. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. I think they gave us, it's, it, would you guys talk about the esports? I think they gave us a small snippet of what some of it is going to look like with the leaderboards. And that's, I, th I think that's why they put that out there just to try to put that and see how people reacted to it. We got to remember that they did sign up with Energy Esports Company. They made a character specifically for them. Uh, in my talks with some of the devs, they have talked about it to us that they're very focused on esports. And then they just brought over Justin uh, Hulong or Hulog. I might have pronounced his name wrong. Apologies, Justin. But uh, he he was all over that in the south. East Asia area. That was like his main thing. And he he just did a podcast recently with QL. I don't know if you ever heard it. It's a, it was a really good podcast and he goes into 
his focus on the Southeast Asian market and how many people there are compared to the rest of the world that are actually involved in those esports. So I kind of feel like that 50 million that they're talking about has a lot to do with esports. I don't have inside information on it. It's just kind of a guess of mine. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and <clears throat> I, 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 I believe that big time, big time. And, and I want to say anything about the guilds. <clears throat> when I, when I got into the game, I'm, I've always been very like community focused, guild focused, <clears throat> excuse me and uh when i heard guild of guardians are gonna play as a guild I, that drew me in i loved that so that's another thing we didn't get to test in the alpha was guilds pets like we don't even know what pets are gonna do so we, we have an idea but we don't know we don't know like we didn't even get to test you them in the alpha cadmus like worth way the hell more than everyone else i know that's that's one and and that's one thing I, i've been scratching my head at the entire time was you know where people put value on these heroes and pets and stuff without any information what they do it's just like speculation and, uh, you know, there was no release on their moves. There was no release on what they, what, what kind of character they were. And yeah, Cadmus just boom, right through the roof. And it's just, you know, it's exactly, why is it the so much factor? <laughs> the, the ugly factor. Yeah. The ugly or not. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Digital That's what it is. <laughs> Onyx, Onyx, Onyx is the same way. He's higher than the other two in his category. And the, the only reason I can come up with is he's prettier. <laughs> he does it all the time. And I, I love it. I love it. But that's the thing too. So it's like, with the guilds, and that's that's a, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up because I think what they're doing with the with the guilds, it's like the the mythic guilds are competing against themselves, the adventures are competing against themselves. It's so expensive. Oh, it's it's <laughs> it's wild, it's wild, and it's like, it, you know, it's what is it? Only 500 spots? There's only 500. So that's another thing too. It's like there's only only 500 people in these mythic spots out of 50 million that they want. That's pretty, you know, that's like exclusive. That's like an exclusive club. So is there a benefit in being like, obviously there's got to be something, but what's the benefit in, in owning one? What's the benefit in being in one? Um, you know, but those are going to be the ones that, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. What's the difference of being in an adventures guild and, uh, you know, other than the, the percentage is like 1% temp like what, what's the difference? We need to find like I they would I doubt they would do it, but I would like pay money. I not a crazy amount, but let's see, fifty bucks. Okay, sir. Sure, <laughs> you just heard him. He said a thousand dollars. He'd pay. You heard him. <laughs> well, no, no. For, I, I want to know from the team what they would mm. like. You know, obviously taking out what the market price is right now, what they would value each of the guilds at. If we asked them and said, "Hey, tell us what you think the value." All right. Of these guilds are from adventure to warrior, you know, up to mythic. What are they? Are they going to say, oh, yep, you know, just an ETH for the adventure one seems kind of good to get into it? Or are they going to be like, ah, I mean, I'm kind of surprised those adventure guilds alone aren't 10 ETH right now. And I know that they're right. not going to say that, right? Because no. it's all about the money. But in the grand scheme of things, assuming all of this is successful, like it, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. But then the, the further thing to that is they've said that they're going to release more guilds in time based off right. players and whatnot, but it's not going to be the same of the adventure guilds. So is it like, is that one really going to be worthwhile or is the only value proposition with that their exclusive tournaments that are, you know, again, only for, mm -hmm adventure oh. guilds etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah because that's the thing nice. too we don't know with the guild tokens like you just said same with the energy tokens there's gonna be yeah. new yeah, energy yes, tokens 100%. and one thing that everybody learned in, in alpha is energy is king you know everyone's like just okay we're out of energy now what and on top of that they didn't have the fatigue factor so even though everyone was strapped for energy they didn't have the fatigue factor played into the game as well. So there's more to it. I think deeper rosters, there's so much that there's so many, even though it answered a few things, it opened up a lot more questions as well, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, it gets people asking and, 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 uh, and again, we didn't do the pets. We didn't see the pets. There's going to be more pets and stuff, more heroes down the road. So you're right. Is it, is there going to be, I, I, I feel like having the, the, the Genesis, you know, the, the day one, you know, adventure guilds or the guilds or the pets or the heroes, there's got to be down the road. They're high has to be some sort of advantage one way or another uh just simply because you know people invested so early on uh compared to anything that gets released from from here on out it just has to be They're, they can't they can't put out something in, in the next patch that just dwarves everything else you can't they can't do that you know it's not gonna well happen. wt what do you what do you want out of your guild or wh why why did you buy it let's let's phrase it that way um well I bought it in the wave one sale, so I got it a lot cheaper. You got it than cheap, it baby. Yo. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the that's my hybrid investor side. I got it for that. Uh, I looked at it and the scarcity, the scarcity factor. Uh, I I looked at all the numbers and I was like, "There's not enough. There's not enough." 
So I knew that right off the bat. And right now, I really don't know what I'm going to do with them, to be honest with you. Uh, I actually picked up my third one not too long ago. The price was down, but it was actually went down even more, which was crazy. I couldn't believe it, but that's the way it goes. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, to be honest with you, because I'm, I'm too busy to operate one as a guild leader. So I think I'm going to be looking to rent them out, possibly, or... That's, if has I, that been confirmed about being able to do that? Or, like, I'm not... I, I don't really know how that... They're works. not doing it themselves. They're going to leave it to third-party applications, which concerns mm. me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to put my eggs into something that's not official GOG stuff until I feel safe about it, but... They're, they're going to allow it. They're, they're, they're going to encourage it. And I can see like YGG and all these big guilds getting somebody on it to make sure it's a safe product because they're going to be wanting to do that for, for all their scholars and all that stuff. And uh, so I don't really have a good answer to what, why, I, why I got into it was for the investment side and possibly if I wanted to get my friends into play, give them a home to go to, because I seen the scarcity point and I got people lined up in my family and friends that want to play this and i want to make sure that they got a home to go to and play mm -hmm. you know so I, my, my answer is kind of all over the place i know because that's the thing like, like you say there's only so many spots and with 50 million people on board there's not enough spots for players or the ratio is way off so it's it's nice that you say that you bought one because you want your friends and family that want to play to be able to benefit as well because if you're not in a guild you're not going to be getting the the drops or the the cut from it the revenue whatever it is so yeah there's and that's the thing that's the beauty of this game is there's going to be guilds that are there to compete there's going to be casual guilds there's going to be guilds that are just you know they're there to earn from a game but they're not going to be top tier they're going to kind of be middle of the pack there's going to be all this stuff and, that, and it's neat because i think a lot of the casual players th and, and that's one thing we've we've mentioned many many times this game has to be good okay if this game has to be okay even to just survive if it's a good game people are going to play it because it's a good game just like diablo you play diablo you're not earning anything you're playing it because you enjoy playing diablo so people always put the play to earn and I, i'm guilty of it too you know people attach play to earn to it but you got to think there's people that are going to be there that just want to play the game because they enjoy it. They don't care about the, the play to earn. They don't care about the guilds. They just want to go in and mash some dungeons okay. and, and enjoy plus it. it. Plus it's mobile. That's the other. Plus it's mobile. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. So you got to understand there's going to be, it's not everybody's there as a, as a crypto NFT, uh, an investors. No, people are going to be there to do. My kids will probably be playing it just to have fun on their iPads or whatever it is, you know, just to play. They're not there to earn. They're just going to mess around with it, you know, with the free heroes. So I think that's, that's, and that's what they want. They want to onboard and stuff. So it's nice that you, like you said, you have that, you have the guild that, you know, your friends and family can get in because if they're, I'm not saying they're, I don't know. I don't know if they're casual or great players, but it's like, you know, game, yeah, game and game and they're going to be the top, you know, the top guild. I don't know. You know what I mean? But it's like in case they are just like casual, like my kids are going to be casual players, but it'd be nice to have a spot for them in a guild uh, just because, you know, so they can have that, that aspect of it as well. Vance, quick question to Schiller. Yeah. Uh, you do you own a guild token, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I had back to my point earlier, had eight, went down to four because my, my plan was that I was actually going to buy up for a Warriors Guild when it was at 10, and I was, like, in my head, okay, like, I can trade X amount, but then the price is kind of, you know, every day that I looked at it was going down, so it's like, hey, I'm just going to wait, which turns out to be good, but now I'm like, mm, market's looking pretty good for a sweep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's way down compared to where it, where it was back in January. January like, I, like honestly, so so I, I'm thinking of like once we're done here, I'm going to go look at the market and make like a game plan about it, which is kind of back to my point about, you know, when you have people that are doing content that make you think about stuff and realize like, hey, you know, there is still the community that's there. There is still people that are excited to play this. It's not in the spotlight right now. Right. But that's the time that, you know, right. A hundred percent. That's the that's the time you got to be looking. Is when people aren't looking, that's when you got to be looking. Because when everybody's looking, that's when you're gonna you know you're paying more and every, you know. Right now, people are, are like we're saying we're that that air, that time frame that it's like there's nothing really going on. Uh, but that's the time you want to be looking for sure when everyone's you know, looking away. That's uh, what he said earlier. What Schiller said earlier about you know people could have sold and waited and come back and gotten more later. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. And that would have been the better play for me. Mm -hmm. It would have been a much better play for me. But like I don't know, man. I have like this weird. FOMO going on with this company that like I, I said this in our last podcast we did I feel like there's going to be a moment in this game and I don't know when it is where that switch gets flipped and when that switch gets flipped and people realize what this is I don't think there's anything going back and I'm afraid of being on the wrong side of that so that's why that's why I just held I just held and I'm just going to deal with it
I just have, I have so much confidence in this game. Yes, I love the concept. Yes, I love the team. I think, like I say, the foundation of this is the best I've ever seen in any game I've, I've been involved with. This, to me, has the best foundation with the team-wise and just the way they deal with things. Um, I'm so bullish on it. Like, I'm truly, truly, truly believe in this. And right now, you know, the game's a year away. Obviously, there's not going to be so much hype right now. But when it's coming closer time to to the game to get released and everyone's talking about it and then people are actually playing it it's in their hand and they're, they're telling friends yo man check out this game you know guild of guardians and then this person gets in they bring their friends and that's how it, it blows up there's gonna be content creation around it people you know when people are playing the game in their hand or they hit that first bottleneck you're gonna see that that's when the, the things are gonna change for sure for sure question yep when they fully launch the game whether it comes out in like beta and they stay in beta forever you know that yeah. seems to be yeah. a thing for people or if they fully launch the game if they drop guilds for sale or heroes what happens to the existing market what do, do you think that it's going to be enough of an onboarder that at that point there'll be new people <laughs> Or do you think that's just going to kind of like alienate? Again, I'm not really necessarily talking about guilds uh, that are the upper tier ones, but like the Adventure Guild and then some of the heroes, if they're not a whole lot different, what happens to the market? Are you talking about new heroes and stuff? Yes. Depends. What's it, that's, it, it's a, that's an interesting question because it depends what's the difference between the original heroes and these heroes. If it's like well, these I are... It's just the founder thing though, right? Like unless yep. they're doing like completely new abilities and everything, like that's, it's just the label that's on it. Correct. That's well, that's correct. The, I, I don't think that'd be very good for the, the, the founder heroes. That, that, end. Right. So that's, yeah. that's well, I'm not to be negative or anything. Right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Well, and that's been brought up in AMAs right. and questions to the team. And they have repeatedly said that the founders will always be the founders and there will be something different about them. They're very tight lipped on anything that would give any financial position. I think it's a lawyer thing or something like that. They, they will not give anything that will, uh, fluctuate prices and uh, i think it's kind of smart on their part but they have said that the founders they they realize that's what started off and there will be some form of difference that differentiates them from things down the road what that is we have no idea they have to they have to they have to make it different there's got to be a reason to hold these they have to give you a reason to, if it's like even if it's like five percent better returns on the dungeon or one percent better return on the dungeon at the end you know you get like a few more crystals or something whatever it is i don't know what it is it has to have something different that separates them from anything else that gets released from here on out or else there's no reason to have it just to have a founder name on it doesn't that to, i mean for, for, for me personally right. i don't care about a founder's name i want what what works in the game for me and if i have a hero that's a third the price that does the same thing guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go for that that other hero yep. that's just the way it is so these these founder heroes have to have something like i said i don't know what it is i just this is off the top of my head but if it's like you know you get a few extra crystals or a few whatever whatever it is that you get at the end of the dungeon or whatever it is i don't know they, they experience up a little bit faster whatever it is they have to do something different than anything else that comes out from here on out period it has to or else there's no reason to have them you know um, but yeah, I know a lot of people always look at the value on, on the, on the things. Um, again, we don't even know what all of them do, but I will say from what I've seen in the alpha, the gameplay has been absolutely incredible. The heroes that we got to you and, and we've only got to use a few of them guys. We only got to use a few of them. So we didn't even get to test all of them, but you can definitely tell that certain heroes are going to be needed. I mean, we, we, the ones we use, they could be for all we know, they could be like starter heroes that you're going to, you know, but, um, the heroes are going to matter the, the way you build your team healers and range and tanks and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It matters. And, uh, I'm super excited to see, um, how it all plays out and, and people's, you know, the meta teams and there's, that's all going to get figured out the best team, the best, this, the best, you know, and it's gonna be very interesting to see, uh, it all play out in the end. Uh, WT, what are your thoughts on, um, on, on the future guilds, future pets, future, whatever it is. We don't even know what the pets, these pets do. So what are your thoughts on the future stuff? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think the guilds are going to be the ultimate. I still feel like they're, they're not exactly like land, but I think they're going to be the ultimate in a very close second. I've been saying this forever, energy boosters. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, not too far off third, the pets, and then it's going to be a mixed bag with the heroes. And I, I've, I've said also too, deep rosters are going to matter. Well, I've already seen it in the pre-alpha how one hero can turn a dungeon around. So I think deep rosters True. are going to matter. And I, I, everybody knows me. Everybody knows I'm biased in this project. I'm not. I'm not going to sure I am. I'm super biased. I've done my research. I've seen the team. I've seen what Immutable X is. Yeah. I've seen who is backing Immutable X and these giant companies they don't put money in a project that they haven't vetted out 
And these Ferguson brothers, they're very impressive. They're very impressive guys. So I'm super bullish on it. I'm biased. I'm guilty. Oh, I have I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be uh, just an incredible game. I have no doubt in my mind. It just even as a game itself, this is going to be this is going to be talked about. This is going to be one of those games where we look back, people are going to say this is this is right. They did it right. They're not rushing it. They're 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 building it properly from the ground up. I'm with you on that, I man. I, I am I am a little biased. I try not to be. But I am a little bit. I love the game. I love the community. I love the team. I love the people involved. We've met a, a lot of really cool people through the community. Um, and yeah, I'm super biased on it too. Chiller, thoughts? Yo, listen, I'm, I'm going to spin this on you guys right quick. Let's hear it. Before right. we can go into that. Let's hear it. I'm, I'm looking at the market right now, right? Because like, okay, you, you guys got me convinced. Let's say, I'll wait for a little bit. We're looking back into <laughs> things a little bit more. The, myth, the mythic characters that are literally just the chromas real realistically how how do you see them kind of priced because i'm seeing that some are like at 15 some are like at 40 again they're so limited but like in terms of what we see within the traditional nft market right now that digital identity or that one of one owning sometimes makes you you know right the big shot within a community or right. you know if you're a company or trying to represent something oh shit yeah. NRG, they have the mythic, right? Hypothetically speaking, what do you guys think happens with the mythics, if anything? Do you, okay, so my personal thing, they have to do, do okay, I'm going to be honest with you myself. I don't care about myth, I don't care about the skins, okay? okay. <laughs> if, 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 if the reborn hero does the same thing as the mythic one that cost me uh, 100 ETH, I'm going to use the, the regular. That's me personally, I've been like that my entire life. Flashy things don't um, don't get me distracted. Okay, if it does the same thing, I'm good. So to me, I don't. I, I've never been that way. Skins and 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 flashy things they never distract me from what I'm I'm focused on. But I know it works. It works on a lot of people, and that's the point of them. So for me personally, I don't, I'm okay with just having a regular reborn. I'm okay with having a regular whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, but I know a lot of people they they need that, and uh, you know that's that's just the reality of it. WT, what's uh, your take on it? This is not financial advice. This is not medical advice. This is probably not even sane advice. Yeah, I, I know he had, got. Yeah. I went and got all the elites for all the rares, and the only reason why I did that is I was listening to my buddy QL. He was talking about Gods Unchained, and they have these special cards there, and they're similar to a different skin. They don't give you any stat boost, nothing. And IMX at some point rewarded everybody that was holding those, and IMX has a history of rewarding people that hold throughout their history of doing this. So this is a straight up gamble on my part. I went out and got those just in case. Uh, it could blow up in my face, but that's my investor side of reading the tea leaves of what have they done in, in the past. And they, in December, Robbie Ferguson was on some AMA somewhere and he said that that tradition was gonna continue. So I'm going off of words that he said and that, that's why I made that move, so. That's, and that's, that's, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like, if they have value in the, here's the thing. If it's just a skin, then I'm not interested. If they have some hidden value that we don't know about, well, that's a different thing. But if it's just a skin for me, I'm, I'm okay with just having a regular, just looking person. Uh, what about you, Schiller? What are your thoughts on it? Listen, somebody's going to want that shit as a digital flex. We're seeing yeah. way too much money flowing around in the digital <laughs> marketplace just for identity, where for something like this on a game, if it's legitimately like 50 million players, 15 ETH right now for one of these is laughable. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, it got I mean, even let me, lower. Let me, on let me one look. Of them. But yeah, the Mythic Arcus right now is. Is the, uh, is the, uh, is the legendary still out there for under 10? Uh, do you mean like just in heroes in general? There was a legendary for like 9.9 .9 ETH the other day. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been quiet about it, but now that's going to get out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, well, let me see. There it goes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, it's off the market. <laughs> well, I'm curious how many people, because like realistically, though, if you pulled one of these things from the original Guild of Guardians draw, right? And I think this is something that's really for the entire NFT space where we've seen with Moonbirds that dropped the other day, yep. there was people that ended up winning that raffle and there was, you know, a lot of people are seeing these people that, you know, admittedly have bigger, uh, you know, crypto investments. You're like, okay, the rich get rich or whatever. But there was, you know, a lot of people that did only have, you know, between two to three ETH to their name. They're like, hey, I won the raffle. We got this. Some of them pulled ones they were able to sell for 130 ETH. It's crazy. And they're like, wow, that's completely life-changing. And so within this, 
I, we don't know everybody's financial situation, but the people that own these mythic ones, I mean, at certain points, you right. might think, hey, like if they decide to get out of NFTs, if they decide of this, and so it's really hard to time those markets. But when the game comes out, I think the prices for them look completely different. I I, I agree. I think the prices. And that's, I think every, just everything, not just the, the mythic, I think for all of them, I think the prices are going to go up, but I agree. People do like the flashy things. People do like, you know, the best armor in the game or the best, you know, whatever it is. You're, you're a hundred percent right on that. That is a thing that people like to flex. Um, but again, we don't know. We don't know what they, I mean, if it's just the looks, even if it's just the looks, people will pay for that. That's true. If even if it's just the look Comment for me thing. personally, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for me personally, I, I, I'm okay without just the flashy stuff, but you're right. People will buy it just for the, the title alone. For sure. For sure. It's spicy. It's going to be good though. Like I'm, I'm looking at this now. I'm, I, I'll listen, we, we might be going look at them. here. We got them. <laughs> we might, we might be racing. I'm going to go to the market. We're, 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 we're the market just sweeping at you and me right now. It's, it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, that was, uh, that was cool. Is there anything you guys want to close up on? Uh, anything you want to say uh, on our way out? Uh, just to kind of just let anybody know, uh, Schiller, let us know about you, what you're up to, what's going on and uh, any final thoughts on everything? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, honestly, like, for me, if you guys have enjoyed this conversation, I would love if you wanted to come by swing uh, to the Twitch stream. It's just uh, twitch.tv slash Vaughn, V-O-N underscore uh, S-C-H-I-L-L-E-R. Uh, we try to do content, like, pretty much every day, and, and that's that's something that I'm finding somewhat of a struggle with, to be honest. I've been doing content in the space for about like a year where, you know, the vast majority of it is just looking at NFT projects and admittedly, all of them kind of have the same roadmap and to participate in that, again, a lot of the times you have to spend money and so, Personally, I'm really, really excited and looking forward to when we do have these play to earn games where I can do something because I'm not good at games. Sometimes I do League of Legends and stuff. I'm terrible. <laughs> being able to play some of these blockchain games, which we've been, you know, basically waiting for for the past year, I'm really, really excited for. And I think that once we're able to do that, the entire space is going to shift. Yeah. And then we do again go from that what's culturally relevant to what's technologically relevant slash what's fun to play. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, man, because, you know, uh, you, you know, as well, you've been in my Twitch stream as well. I've been in your stream as well. Um, yeah, we, we you know we play games. I'm not great at games either. Uh, certain games I shine, other games not so much. Yeah, but it's right. more of like the community thing and chatting and getting to know people. And you're right. Once the play to earn stuff uh, become, you know, we're it, we're gonna we're gonna have games to play. I think there is gonna be a massive shift as well. And and I, I know when Guild of Guardians is out, I will be streaming it like crazy. Like it will be a Guild of Guardians stream um, for sure. So I can't wait for that to happen to be able to show the world, be able to get you know. You know, do our thing. I really hope you're popping off with it. Can you imagine to go and Capone's like, bro, I'm still in the first dungeon. <laughs> Dude, I got my two heroes just minding my business in dungeon <laughs> one. You know, it's fine. It's fine. If that's, maybe I'll have to get some in Chromas. Maybe I'll have to get some cool skins. Oh, you, no, you got to pay the good players. Be like, hey, look, I got a guild. Listen, I need you guys to come out with you and raid. Yeah. You guys caught. You got to play really yeah. good for it. Help me out. Help me out. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I, I can't wait to see how it how it all plays out. But like I said, once, it, once we're able to stream it, you know for a fact, dude, that is going to be all over it. Yeah, no, it was good to see you in the stream the other day. It was uh, Schiller was hanging out and stuff. It was good to get him on chatting a little bit as well. Uh, that is awesome, man. So, yeah, that was cool. I definitely come check. I check out your streams as well. I just kind of sit there and listen. I have you in the background. I work on stuff. I always listen. Uh, but, yeah, very awesome. WT, what about you? Other than growing that caterpillar that will soon turn into a butterfly, all of a sudden he's going to get wings and he's going to fly away. What's going on, brother? What's new? Talk to me. What do you, you want to say on the way out? Just me trying to channel Tom Selleck. You know me. So... <laughs> <laughs> for us old guys, we know who that is. But yeah, uh, yeah thanks for coming on, Schiller. I loved uh, hearing your thoughts, even when they were counter thoughts. Uh, I'm always I'm always hyped about hearing other people's perspective, especially you with you being in space uh, uh, with a lot of projects and a little bit longer than us. So cool. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for listening. If you're still here, we love you. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>